Hello everyone, this is Robert Gephardt and today I want to talk to you about a book. I said before I wouldn't be presenting or talking about any books unless they had to do with linguistics and languages or translations, something along those lines, or with business, being an entrepreneur, being a freelancer, you know, something to do with uh, personal business. In other words, stuff that you'll find useful and helpful. So this video and this book that I'm going to talk about falls under the latter section. And the name of the book is, let me get this right because it's kind of complicated, uh, was Letters from a Self-Made Merchant to His Son. This is a book that was written, I think, in 1902. And it's, these are the letters written by John Graham, head of the House of Graham and Company, pork pa packing company in Chicago. And they're written to his son, Pierpont, who, uh, who is just starting off in the business. And they're letters of uh, advice and encouragement Sometimes they're scolding him, stuff like that. And it's a, connection, a collection of these letters and they're extremely interesting. Uh, there's their stories, their anecdotes, their pieces of advice. And even though it's written over a hundred years ago, it's stuff that, I mean, you would see today and it's very useful, it's very relevant. I wanna mention a couple of things he talks about and maybe also some uh, quotes of uh, that, some of the quotes that I highlighted from there. Well, let me start. He has a story at a certain point about this guy called Jim. Uh, college graduate guy, seems lazy, and he's a guy that he hired to start working in the company, start working uh, down at the bottom and work his way up. And so he talks about how he started him lugging boxes, this guy Jim, and then Jim said he hurt his shoulder. So he came, he came up with a system in which the boxes could kind of self-lug themselves and pulley system is something that basically guaranteed that Jim would be out of a job, right? And so then the, the boss uh, decided to make him a timekeeper. Someone who, who back then, you know, in the factories, he had to keep time and make sure everything was running on time. And so Jim was kind of lazy and didn't feel like doing it. So he set up a timekeeping system. So then the boss decided to make him write out letters. And because he had to, back then you have to write a lot of letters for correspondence. And, uh, but then he said, I don't know, that he got the equivalent of carpal tunnel or something. So he made, made the boss buy a typewriter. So uh, then he made uh, Jim do door to door sales. And then after a while of doing door to door sales, Jim convinced him to set up a marketing campaign instead. So he goes through all these examples and basically how Jim was so lazy, but he kept saving the company money. So the boss had to keep giving him raises and keep promoting him. And he kept going ahead in the company by basically being too lazy to deal with what he was given to do. And so it's interesting. It's a different point of view. And, um, and I find uh, there are a lot of examples like this. Lessons you can learn that aren't the most obvious ones you would think of and that are a bit different, even though it was written over 100 years ago. Um, and then there's some quotes that I like from throughout the book. I'll uh, mention a couple of the shorter ones here. You can trust a woman's taste on everything except men. And it's mighty lucky that she slips up there or we'd pretty nigh all be bachelors. Um, here's some other quotes. Poverty never spoils a good man, but prosperity often does. Um, I want to say right here that the easiest way in the world to make enemies is to hire friends. What else is there? Uh, You'll find that education's about the only thing lying around loose in this world, and it's about the only thing a fellow can have as much as he's willing to haul away. Everything else is screwed down tight and the screwdriver is lost. I just like the way that's put. Um, when I was a young fellow and out of place, I always made it a rule to take the first job that offered and uh, to use it for bait. You can catch a minnow with a worm and a bass will take your minnow. A good fat bass will tempt an otter and then you've got something worth skinning. Basically, he's talking about leverage, you know, use whatever job you can take as leverage to get your next job. And it ties along with what I've talked about using your early jobs to get ratings and referrals and, uh, and use those to get your next better jobs and bigger jobs. And obviously, he goes into this, um, this topic as well. Uh, let's see what else we have here. A mistake sprouts a lie when you cover it up. Tact is the knack of keeping quiet at the right time, of being so agreeable yourself that no one can be disagreeable to you, of making inferiority feel like equality. Oh, here's an interesting one. Of course, clothes don't make the man, but they make all of him except his hands and face during business hours. And that's a pretty considerable area of the human animal. Uh, be slow to hire and quick to fire. Um, it's easier for a boss to do a thing himself than to tell someone twice to do it. 
Worrying is the one game in which if you guess right, you don't get any satisfaction out of your, out of your smartness. I like that one. There are two unpardonable sins in this world, success and failure. Those who succeed can't forgive a, fail a fellow for being a failure, and those who fail can't forgive him for being a success. If you do succeed though, you'll be too busy to bother very much about what the failures think. I like that one too. Uh, never learn anything about your men except from themselves. A good manager needs no detectives and the fellow who can't read human nature can't manage it. There are two things you never want to pay any attention to, abuse and flattery. The first can't harm you and the second can't help you. And there are other ones, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Anyway, that's enough for now. This is just an interesting book. If you can, I'm sure you can find it cheap. Again, it's an old book. And so you can probably find, I found it on Kindle for cheap. I'm pretty sure that's why I bought it. I don't remember exactly. Someone must have recommended it to me. I definitely recommend looking it up. I'll leave a link to, uh, to it down below. And it's definitely something I recommend and that I gave five stars to, which I don't do very often but I found a lot of useful information in there. That's pretty much it for now. If you did find this useful, please don't forget to click like or thumbs up because then I can tell what's useful and what isn't. Uh, in terms of videos, it's the best way for me to keep track. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this in the future. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.